Hello everyone. Welcome to day two of the Heritage Bank five day virtual seminar in commemoration of the International Women's Day. I hope you guys enjoyed our session yesterday talking about finances and basically building your finances for the future. Um, that session was amazing and we had it with um, Afola Shade Alunge, one of our staff here at Heritage Bank. So today we are going to be having an amazing session with an amazing speaker in person of Mrs. Mary Apobome. I will just be reading her bio um, as we start off this session and she'll be speaking to us for between 30 to 40 minutes. Then we'll take questions and answers after her session. So Mrs. Mary Akpobome is the Chief Operating Officer of Imperium Capital Partners PLC, formerly HBCL Investment Services, a private, <coughs> excuse me please, a private investment company. Prior to her appointment to Imperium Capital Partners PLC, Mrs. Mary Akpobome was the Executive Director of Business Banking, overseeing all corporate, commercial, special projects, intervention schemes, multilaterals, agriculture, and export businesses of Heritage Bank. A fellow of the Institute of Credit Administrators, she holds an MBA from the University of Lagos and a bachelor's degree in theater arts from the University of Benin. She's an alumnus of Lagos Business School, London Business School, and INSET Business School in France. She has attended courses at Standard, Stanford, sorry, Stanford Graduate School, Harvard Business School, Kellogg Executive Education, as well as IMD in Switzerland. In 2015, following the acquisition of Enterprise Bank by Heritage Bank PLC, Mrs. Mary Apobome was appointed the Acting Managing Director of Enterprise Bank Limited. Her solid experience in the management of people and resources was instrumental in stabilizing the operations of the bank improving its service orientation and preparing it for a seamless integration with Heritage Bank PLC. A consummate banker with over 30 years cognitive experience and vast proficiency and skills in credit management, commercial and retail strategies, Mrs. Miria Pobome began her banking career with Citizens International Bank, serving in different departments before joining Platinum Bank Limited in 2001, and she rose to the position of Executive Director Designate in 2008, overseeing the service bank of Bank PHB, now Keystone Bank. She's going to be talking to us today about striking a balance in all the roles that we as women play in our lives, that daughters, mothers, career women, um, sisters, um, we are different things to different people. So today she's going to be talking to us about how to strike that balance as women in the different roles that we occupy in our lives. You're welcome, Ma. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ma. You have the floor. Welcome. All right. Good morning and Thank you, Amarachi. Thank you, Heritage Bank. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining in. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here to just speak uh, about lessons that I've learned um, personally, and obviously um, lessons that I've seen uh, successful women and sort of um, way they have carried on in their lives as daughters, as sisters, as wives, as mothers, as career women, as entrepreneurs, all of that coming together uh, to be able to form, to, to be able to attend what I would call and some sort of an integration. So being a whole woman that is able to come to, to put together all of these roles and come out of it, to be able to play all of these roles we're talking about and be successful at them. And now let's be clear, success is relative. What's successful to you may not be successful, may, may not be the same thing on the scale of, of what success is. Um, for me, each of these roles come together to make us who we are, come together to form who we are, come together um, to, for us 
in the life that we have, that we're living. So to be able to pull all of this together is what I personally call intentional living. It's really just approaching your life intentionally. Um, it's really about the choices that you make every day. Now, I'm not oblivious to the fact that there are extraneous circumstances that may affect some choices that you would want to make, that you may want to make. Um, so your religious background, your cultural background, your, your political background, um, and all of that. They, 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 yes, they do play a role, but at the end of the day, in the, in, even with all of that, there are people, in spite of it all, okay, that are living, um, that, are, that are living fulfilled lives, Sorry. that are living fulfilled lives, combining all of these roles. So let's look at each of these roles and roles. Okay, so we're really juggling them. I'm sure we see those people in um, in circus, in, in a circus, who are juggling these balls and are doing everything um, they can to ensure that none of the balls drop. Um, that's in circus. That's in a circus. Okay, in real life, we all know that sometimes those balls drop. In all these areas of my personal life, these balls have dropped one way at one point or the other these balls have dropped. In decisions I've taken or taken, the balls have dropped. In environments I've found myself, the ball has dropped. So we're not here to talk about perfection, okay? I'm not here to talk about perfection. I'm here to see how you can, you can be all of this, be fulfilled, and the people who, who, who form, um, I mean, if you're a daughter, it means you have a parent. If you're a wife, it means you have a husband. If you're a sister, it means you have a brother. If you're a friend, it means you have a friend. If you're a career woman, it means you have a business. It means you're in some sort of paid employment, so you have colleagues, you have, you know, subordinate peers and all of that. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, it means you have to report to or report to you and all of that. So there are other people in this race of life that we run. Um, so, it's important that we realize that none of us is an island. Okay, so each of the decisions that we take invariably affect us and affect those other people. Now, as, as a daughter, your parents do have an expectation. As a daughter, you have an expectation of yourself of how well you want to be a daughter, what type of daughter you want to be, what type of wife you want to be, what type of sister, what type of friend, what type of coach, what type of man. All of those are determined by you. But it's important that um, as we run through this, we, 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 we look at a few things that I think that if we, um, as we look at the themes of this year's um, International Women's Day, which is choose challenge, the question becomes, where are you right now? Along the lines of these roles that you play as a woman, where do you want to be? Now, critical to the success or the fulfilled or the successful integration of all of these roles, all in the build to find some sort of a hammer is time. Time. So I came to this session today holding this. Okay. So time, it's an hourglass. So up there is sand that is dropping in little bits, and that is time. That is represented time. All right. Whatever, as the time goes and it goes in there, sometimes you lose time. Sometimes you lose time in situations that you can get back or you can repair. Sometimes there are situations that as this time is going, as this sand is dropping, you do not get it back. Time is critical. So how do you deploy your time? How do you deploy your resources? Because time is a resource along these respective roles that you are playing. How do you um, a lot of time 
to be a wife, to be a mother, to be a career woman, to be an entrepreneur, to be a friend, and very importantly, to be you. Um, over the years, we've realized that, I've realized that we've spent a lot of time um, ensuring that the people around us are doing well, that the people around us are doing great, that our, our parents are fine, that as a wife, that you, your, your husband, your family, your children, that he is doing well. What about you? So let's put each of us, okay? Let's put, put each of these roles, what I call compartments. Each compartment has a size. Each compartment has a size. The, 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 the size of each compartment depends on the importance that you place in it. So when you, when you, come to, when, when you put up that, um, th those compartments, whether you want to do them in circles, you want to do them in squares, but when you put it up, please create a size in which in there, the biggest size is you. The biggest size is you. To be a great daughter, a great wife, a great sister, a great career woman, and all of that, you have to be great. You have to be in a good place. So you have to create time for yourself. A lot of times we do create time for ourselves. So we get burnt out. And when you get burnt out, there is no way you can then be a great mother or a great anything. Okay? You are not okay. You have to be okay first. Um... Another thing I want to talk about is the mind. This is a very, 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 very powerful tool. Our mind. What, what's going in there? What are we processing? What sort of mental boundaries are we creating? What are the mindsets that we have in there? Either from our upbringing, like I said, our environment plays a quite a role um, in shaping us, okay? But at the point when you do become an, an, an adult and can take certain decisions for yourself, what mindsets, especially as a woman, that what is your role? Oh, you're only a wife, you should be only in the kitchen, you should be only this or only that. What mindset have you created for yourself? Like I said, in spite of, in spite of that religious affiliation, in spite of that um, um, upbringing, what has shaped you, as created by you. What do you tell yourself that you want to do or you want to be, irrespective, like I said? Um, if you don't work on that mindset, you're going to drown, okay? You're going to drown. You are going to drown in everything that is happening around you. Women are not supposed to be this, Women are not supposed to be that. Women are not supposed to be seen. They are not supposed to be heard. Women are not supposed to be. Um, if a friend posted something yesterday that that got me thinking, oh, so um, she, she asked, why is it that when a woman has become something like our very esteemed uh, Mrs. Konjo Iwala, and everybody goes the first woman to be. If that were a role, if it were a man that stepped into that role, there wouldn't be the first man to be. It would be the first person to have gone to the moon. It wouldn't be the first man. But if it is a woman, it then becomes the first woman to be. What are, what's my point? There is a mindset. There is a perception. There is a myth as to who, what we should be, how we should be as human beings, as women, rather. But for me, I believe that we can be anything that we choose to be. We can be everything that we choose to be. And we can be great at it all. You can be a fantastic daughter, an awesome wife, a great mother, and be an achieving career woman or an entrepreneur. It just depends on your mindset and the allotment of the 24 hours that we all have in one day. So let's again talk about time. How are you tracking your time? Okay, what data do you have that says from 8 a.m. or from 6 a.m.? Okay, whatever the start of your day is. 
till when you shut down. How are you allotted that time? If you are not already putting it together, I suggest that you keep what I call a time log. It is to, if you keep a time log over a one week period, a two week period to a one month period, an addendum in going through what you are, what you have done, okay? You will, you will understand or, or fully get to the place where you say, um, I should be allotting more time to this. I should be shutting down this. I should be doing this. Bear in mind that, like I said earlier, you have created compartments, okay? Where each of these rules, where you fit yourself into each of these rules. The time that you then allot to each of these rules, to a very large extent, is going to determine how successful you are in each of these rules. So it's important that you keep that data that is going to help you track how you spend, how you spend your time. Please figure out your priorities. Figure out your priorities. Spend some quality time reflecting on what is important to you, and then analyze the time that you audit for yourself, and then begin to answer some key questions as you do. Why are you doing what you are doing? You need to ask yourself, why do I do what I do? And why am I allotting this amount of time and resources and energy in doing I am, should I stop doing this particular thing? Should I start doing this particular thing? Should I continue doing this particular thing? Should I be doing more of this thing? Should I be doing a particular thing differently? Or like I said, I shouldn't be doing it at all. Please set measurable goals. Um, earlier in our careers, we used to be taught, um, uh, um, it's called be hard, be hairy, audacious goals. I usually add, achievable goals and then I would tease um, that there's no need dreaming to be the Queen of England if you are from a tina, um, like myself okay so they can be big they can be hairy they can be audacious but they have to be attainable if not you're going to get frustrated if you are just in the air you're going to get frustrated along the way so be very intentional in that goal setting whether it be your marriage very intentional about what it is that this marriage should be. Be very intentional about what career path you have chosen for yourself and that you're absolutely happy where you are in this career. You are absolutely happy. If you are an entrepreneur, you are absolutely happy and focused in this entrepreneurial role. You are absolutely um, a great sister, a great daughter, um, and all of that. And then it's important that you block out time in this very tight schedule that we all have for me time, for 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 your for your just for your down for, for those times when you just need to rest your head. Personally, when I get into my room, I lock my door. I take off the I I I, I put my phone on silent. I take off the handsets in the room. They know in my home that you do not try to call me. You don't. You don't. That is the time that I've decided that I don't want I don't want to be with anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to go under the TV, pick up the remote control, and just watch whatever it is that I want to watch. Or doing whatever it is. Or just sleeping. For you to try to get me out of there, there has to be fire somewhere, right? There has to be. So it's important that I block out time the same way I'm blocking out time for other people. It's important that I block out time for myself. We need to schedule, we need to schedule, we need to schedule. Um, we need to plan this work and this is our lives, and then we need to be able to work. As, as, as you plan the work, we need to work the plan. We can say everything that we want to say right now if we do not act it. We are wasting our time. I believe that the reason why a number of us are where we are, I guess where we where we want to be, is not knowledge. It's the it's in the doing. It's in the action, and that includes me. And that includes me. Um, personally, I, I want to get on the treadmill. I want to be a bit more. 
uh, I want to um, do a bit more physical um, activities and all of that. And I realized that, I mean, treadmill is downstairs. Oh, I tell myself it's because the treadmill is downstairs. And so I said, oh, move the treadmill upstairs. It is moved upstairs. I'm still staring at it. Oh, move it into the room. Maybe the moment I wake up, I'll get on it. It moves into the room. I'm staring at it. Discipline. It really is in the discipline to act. If you are not deliberate about action, you are just going to be talking and talking and talking. And then guess what? While you are doing all of the talking, the time is ticking. Time is ticking. So it is in the discipline to get up to do. Successful people plan their work. They plan their time. If you have one life, you have one life, please get a date planner. Block out specific things in your life and block out, um, um, block out, sorry, block out specific um, activities that you need to do and then put that planner in to work. We have planners, it's all over the place. Please put it to work and be disciplined about it. We also need to set what I call clear, healthy barriers, very healthy barriers. What, 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 um, what, your, what are your parents? How much time do your parents expect you to come and spend with them? Do they know that you are unable to spend that much time with them? Your friends, um, I'm sure that, um, that, that, that there, are, there are friends, you have you could have some friends who call you from time to time. You're able to take their calls. They, 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 they get upset. Um, they get in touch at some point and they're like, oh, now you have become a big woman. And you are no longer taking my call. It's very, very important that you clearly communicate your boundaries. That I said, hell, that's why I call them healthy boundaries. This is not you being um, all hopty. No, this is you setting clear boundaries and communicating those boundaries. So everybody's expectation is met. That expectation, um, if not spelled out, you may think that you are doing your very best in your relationship. Let's just stay with your friend. Okay, you may be putting your best. But your friend doesn't know that because your, it doesn't, you haven't communicated to your friend that in this space of 24 hours, the very best that I can give of you is five or 10 minutes a month. And truly, that is the best that I can give. Now, people will appreciate the fact that you have five minutes at any given point in time. All right. So healthy boundaries means that you communicate to your superiors, your, your, co your co-workers, your partners, your families, and um, what is going to enable you give in your best and still be whole as a person. So for those of us who are um, subordinates in our work, this may be hard, but have you tried um, having a, a conversation with your supervisor and letting the person know that there are some days in a week or there is a day in a week that I will come in late. And maybe that is because that's my either my antenatal day or that's the day I need to take the child to the hospital or that's the day that I have set aside for something other than work or the hours that I've set aside um, for, for something else or, or, or other than work. This may sound hard, this may sound like, oh, it would, it would, it would, it would, it's not, um, it, it's not on, it's unthinkable, it will not work. But let's think about it. Today we're having this conversation, we're having this session um, via Microsoft Teams. Imagine trying to have this sort of conversation two years ago via Microsoft Teams. Imagine coming to meetings and you say you can do it. Like everybody's going to laugh at you. But today the world has changed. What's my point? It is possible. It is possible to be able to strike a balance and understand if you with your um uh, with, with your business owner or your superior that this you expect my physical being at this particular time but this is what i i would do at this time 
However, the work is not going to suffer. If anything, because I am fulfilled, I'm going to give you even much more output than, than you expect. Um, trust me, as a, as, as a supervisor or, or as a leader, I'm interested in your output. Whether I'm seeing you, whether I am not seeing you, for those of us that are bankers, my dear colleagues at Heritage Bank, trust me, if the numbers are great, I may not really want to see your face, right? Just let the numbers speak for themselves. Let the output speak for themselves. Let the customer have no complaints. Let the customer be happy with us. Because guess what? The customer is not from most times interested in seeing your face. The customer just wants it done. So you need to set those very clear health boundaries that is going to enable you to be fulfilled in yourself to be able to give um, your very best. You need to work smarter, not harder. So let's let's um, let's visualize. When you are coming to work today, let's visualize that as we're coming in, there is you would have passed some buses along the road, and then there is the bus driver, and there is the one that we call the bus conductor, who's hanging on the bus um, and just calling in passengers or taking out passengers. Let's envisage um, the, the 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 bricklayer. Let's envisage man that is changing tires by the roadside. Those are people that are working very hard very hard, right? What's their output in terms of the Naira and Kobo, even in the dignified work that they do? Uh, so with all the things that they are doing, um, they are bit and are, well, I believe, uh, fulfilled in it. So is it about working so hard? Or is it about working smart? Um, today, Again, like I said, we're on Microsoft Teams. Without Microsoft Teams, we would have needed, I would have needed to leave where I am right now. So I'm in my home. So I would have needed to leave where I am right now, get into the car. Um, you know, imagine the amount of time that I'm spending on the road, coming into um, a room to have this session, which would have been nice because it would have been, uh, would have been good to see each and every one of you uh, face to face. But we're still able to achieve this session by being smart. By being smart. Find a way in the scheme of these various relationships or these various cars that you wear, these various goals that you juggle to make you work smarter rather, rather than, than harder. Use technology. Technology enables you to be more organized, group your emails, voice messages, avoid procrastination, and please learn to say no. That is me also speaking to myself. Please learn to say no. When you set healthy boundaries, when you are working smart, yes, hard, but most importantly, smart, it is important that you know when to say no. When to say no, your body, sometimes tells you it's time to slow down. Your health tells you it's time to slow down. Your, your mind, your spirit says, say no. Please say no. Bear in mind that you are looking out for yourself. Practice honest communication. When you say no, okay, and somebody or the people in your life um, take it well. It is because you have practiced healthy, honest, heartfelt conversations with all of these people in your life over the years. So they know that even though she has said no, she means well. Even though she has said no, there must be a good reason for her to say no. Don't say yes. If you would rather say no and then you grumble, you are hurting yourself okay people around you will appreciate if you have made any mistakes or if there are any assumptions that have gone wrong because those expectations lead to disappointments 
Okay, but if you are open and honest and your conversations are heartfelt, it will be well taken and will be well understood. In the course of wearing all of these hats that we wear as women, we need to know when to ask for help. Being a superwoman is great, but what is awesome is being able to deliver it on the community that you have at your disposal to be able to attain this balance, this harmony um, that we are talking about. So you need to learn to ask for help and you need to also have a great support. You need to be able to have a great support at home. If you're a career woman, wife, and you have children, trust me, it's a lot of work. I know it, it's a lot of work and you want to be great in all of these rules. Please get help. You need to get support and where you can afford the support in a way that will keep you sane and fulfilled go and get it and stop penny pinching as i call it okay um i i also learned i also learned something recently uh, from mrs Ibuka, which i said send your money on an errand okay so all of we colleague bankers and um and and, and everybody else that, that has tuned in. Send your money on an errand. Let it work for you. You're an entrepreneur, successful at it. You're a career woman, successful at it. That means that you are earning some decent, uh, you have some decent earning. But you want to be able to have a domestic help who is looking after your children and you want to pay the person 10,000, 15,000 naira, and you want the person to give up their best. It's not going to happen. I'm not saying if you pay the person, a particular sort of person, X amount of money, that that necessarily means the person is going to be great. No, that's not what I'm saying. There that, are some of those people that we know is a no-no, irrespective of how much you pay them. But you don't also not pay people their due vis-a-vis -vis the expectation that you have of them. Delegate, delegate, delegate is also how you know how to um, ask for help and how to work smart. I used to have a problem, a challenge being able to delegate because I was I was always clear about the outcome that I want. So um, I was always striving to make, I'm always striving to make things perfect. So if, if you don't get something done in that particular way, I realized that eh, it's not going the way I want it um, to go. I will collect it and do it myself. And then I realized a couple of things. One, I'm burning out. Two, I'm not doing um, I'm not doing my colleague any good by not allowing them to make those mistakes, all right, and by not allowing them, who knows? The moment I was able to start delegating, I realized that, oh, this has been done differently from how I would have wanted it done, but it has come out even better than how I expected it um, to come out. So I learned um, to delegate all in, 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 in a bit um, to also free myself and to be fulfilled and to be able to take on these other balls uh, and juggle them successfully. Today, the issue of mental health, of our psychological being, of our physical being, of our overall well-being ah, can't be overemphasized. It's very important. Um, that we, we 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 factor this in to the 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 the, the timings of 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 the of of, of how we are setting out attaining um, attaining this balance that we are talking about. So today we talk about choosing to challenge. So I ask you, what is it that you have chosen to challenge? What is it in your role as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, as a colleague, as a friend, as a great member of your community? What is it that you have chosen to challenge? Please ask yourself that question. One of the things that I know that we need to challenge as women is the concept of fear. Fear. Fear of failing. Fear of Fear of so many things, fear of challenging status quo, 
fear of being seen to be, or she wants to be like a man. Um, fear, fear of just stepping out and fulfilling and, and, you know, fulfilling those goals. Fear that you may fail. We have all failed. Trust me, the most successful of people that you know, male, female, have stories of failure. Unfortunately, we don't talk about those enough. I wish that sessions, people begin to have sessions around why they failed, how they failed, what made them fail. We all, we all just gather most times and talk about success stories, but it's important that we can sometimes be, that we can begin to gather to discuss our failures, the times that we have stumbled, how we were able to pick ourselves up. It will help us as we combat that feeling of fear. Because the moment you, you, you see that, oh, oh, she fell at that. She was able to pick herself up and, be, and, 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 and get to this point in her life. Oh, then, then I can, then I can take, I can, I can leap. I can try to leap. If I fall, fine, but let me try. If she tried, she failed, she got up. Then if I try, I fail, I will get up. Fear. Challenge, or choose to challenge that the, the pursuit or lack of that hidden talent, all right? Those qualities that you have, all right? Choose to challenge the, the, the can't do spirit. Because you can. And bring the can do spirit. Choose to challenge the mindset. Like I said, the can't do mindset, the don't do mindset, the fear mindset. Try. If you don't try, one thing is certain, you will fail if you don't try. It's not going to happen. What is what could happen is that you just may win. You just may be successful at it if you try. And if you fail, you learn. And then you get up and then you pick yourself and then you try all over again. Now, when it's all said and done, like I said, in the doing, I hope that we can all find and run our race. I hope that we can all find our feet in the in the depth of the waters that we are, that, 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 that the very modeling water that we have um, right now and be able to run our race successfully. Listen, when you set your boundaries, when you set your goals, when you communicate those goals, when you, when you set out through your planner and put on the, I'm not a matter of can do, I am doing spirit. The universe, the universe itself is going to fall in line. All other parties in this, your role as a mother, as a wife, um, as a sister, as a colleague, as a, everything is going to come together for you to find that fulfillment. But you need to take that step of faith and do what you need to do. So for each and every one of us, you go out there, you take your journal this morning, immediately after this session, take 30 minutes, pick a journal and write there. What is it that I have chosen to change? What is it my role in, the, in these roles as a daughter, sister, wife, um, and all these roles that I play? What is it that I choose to challenge right now? What is it that I can change? Where do I need to adjust? And then I implore you, come to the table at all times with your full gallon self. Your full gallon self, like I said, could be 10 minutes with your friend in a month, but you're coming with your full gallon self. That's your fulfilled self. Your career, your customers, everybody knows that this is your full authentic self. I tried to send an email to a gentleman um, one day. 
and I got a response that said, if you're sending an email on this subject matter, please send it to this person in my office. It is only on Thursdays that I take, um, I respond to emails on so and so subject matters. It's only on X number of days and within this time that I respond to certain things. I was blown away because I could see a gentleman that is living an intentional, unapologetic life. But because I needed him, because he's also somebody that adds value to what he does, to the service that he renders, I had to uh, humble myself and wait till Thursday to be able to send him, to be able to send him an, an email, which of course he then eventually um, he, he then responded because that's the day that he had set aside that he, he responds to, to, to mails on that on, on that subject matter. I could see that this is somebody who is very clear about his boundaries, who is very clear about what he does between his Mondays to his Sundays. Now, does that life happen? Life happens. COVID happened last year. We all set our New Year resolutions, rolled out our journals. COVID happened. We all adjusted. So yes, there will be adjustment. Okay, like I said, the universe itself will adjust. Your parents will adjust. Or all these relationships will adjust. Okay, when they can see that you are being intentional about your life, you are encouraging them as well to be intentional about that. That you are giving them your very best, and you are bringing your true value to them at all times. They will love you. They will love you. For it, they will accept you as you are. And like I said, everybody, including the universe itself, will fall in line. And there will emerge of you that fulfilled person, that balanced person, that person who is living um, life on your terms, okay, to a very large extent, like I said, that life happens, okay, you are living life on, on your terms, knowing, knowing that. When it's all said and done, that is dropping. Okay. And give it time. We're going to have this session right now. It's going to end anytime soon. We're not having this live session again. We have lost that time. What are your priorities? Are you setting those priorities? How much time are you allocating to each of those priorities? And above all, how much time are you setting aside with the priorities that you have set for yourself? On that note, I will say thank you because that's my allotted time because we now need to have time, question, answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma. Wow, wow. <laughs> That was an amazing, amazing session. I'm sure everyone else that tuned in feels the same way. I feel so empowered with knowledge. You said so many things that, you know, for me were deep insights and resonated so well. How taking care of yourself is the first key um, and should be made priority before you start operating in your different roles is so key because so many times as women, we forget that we're important. And we just focus on being mother, wife, and other things. Thank you so much, Ma. It was an amazing, amazing session. And I'm sure our viewers feel the same way. Thank you, Ma. So um, I'll just be asking you a few questions so that we can right. um, hear from others. First of all, I have a personal question that I wanted to ask. OK, so um, you said so many key things about you know getting support setting barriers and knowing when you need to step back and all that so what comes to my mind is for a woman who let's say she's an orphan can you hear me man i can hear okay. you all right man so let's say for a woman who is an orphan she's married with kids and probably she is not earning financially her husband has deserted her and she has to fend for her children where would you advise she starts from? So she's not earning, her husband has deserted her and she doesn't have that family because her mom and dad are late. 
and she's probably an only child. A woman in that situation, you know, how does she start when all she has to do is send for her children and look for a means to earn money to take care of them? Should I come again, ma'am? Okay. Um, what is it that she knows how to do? I believe that everybody has something that they know how to do. What is it she knows how to do? So, book, fry a cara, and so on and so forth. If she needs inspiration, right, let her go to a market. If she needs inspiration, let her go to a market and see the woman that is selling vegetables, put it, um, tomatoes, pepper vegetables and she will tell you that from those vegetables okay she has trained x number of children grandmothers grandmothers i'm not even saying grandmothers who have lost their children and are now taking care of their grandchildren whose children may have passed and are now taking care of their grandchildren grandmothers are on the roadside and um, turning bodies and you'll be amazed, by the way, I did some, some work, okay, on Bali, all right, and you'll be amazed the return <laughs> on, on that investment, okay. What is it that she can do? She needs to get on with the work of her hands. <clears throat> she may not be able to get help because what she earns, it will not be enough to, for her to get um, extra help, okay. So all of these children are primarily just her responsibility. OK, she needs to find something that she can do and she needs. Um, um, obviously, there are certain schools, OK, that she will not be able to afford for her children. Can she homeschool her children? If she can't, then she has to look for schools within the neighborhood that she can afford while she goes out there and get something doing with her hands. She may initially need to borrow. OK, be able to do that because don't forget what I said. I did mention that. At all points, at all times, there has to be your true self, your authentic self in your communication. Over the years, even as being a friend, a sister, a daughter and a wife, even though now you've lost your parents, um, your husband has left you, but you must have built relationships that you doors you can knock on that can give you a seed of 100,000, a seed of X amount of money. Let's not even put a figure to it that can enable you start that little business in your neighborhood. OK, where of course I expect that you apply yourself, try the best akara therein to be able to take care of your children and then just <laughs> um, and then just go from there. There is no there is no um, people, people usually bless. The, the Bible says, "I will bless." The, the Lord says, "I will bless the work of your hands." It implies to me that there has to be work already in your hands. Sitting back, moaning, moaning is not going to cut it. You have to go and get work in your hands for it to be blessed. I also have heard of a Yoruba uh, proverb that talks about um, somebody by the roadside who has uh, some big package in front of him or her that the person wants to put on their head. And we are just staring at that item. You are not making an attempt to pick it up. So nobody can help you. But the moment you attempt to pick it up, all right, the passerby is going to see what you are trying to do and help you um, at that point to put it on your head. So please, my dear sister, you need to go out there, OK? Knock on certain doors. There must be doors that you can, I pray that there would be doors that you can knock on that would um, um, give you some seed capital that, 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 that you can start with. And please, at this time, it's not a time for pride. It's a time for pure humility. Uh, Sorry, but a number of people have stayed down because they're not humble. 
a number of people have stayed down because they are not home. Okay. Today, all of there is no party that is in that is complete if you do not have finger foods. Let's call it what it is: small chops, puff puffs, samosa, and the likes. You can bet that when people started making puff puff as a living, people would have laughed at them. People would have laughed at them. All right. Today, the uh, um, Sahitos and the 12 baskets and, and names like that, <laughs> they are smiling to the bank in tons of millions. No part is complete without them. So, find something to do, okay? Ignore the world because at this point, it's really about you, your family, and your children. That's enough motivation for you to ignore the world, humble yourself, and get going with the work. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you for that response. Very um, comprehensive response you gave. Thank you so much, Ma. Please, we'll be asking a few more questions and I will just lump a few together so that, you know, we can wrap up on time. Sure, go ahead. So, um, go ahead. two women are asking something similar. First one says, I am 30 years old with three children, age five to two years old. I am trying to build a business selling things Sincerely, I feel overwhelmed. I can't seem to satisfy everyone. I'm burning out. My income cannot afford me a driver or a matured house help. I am getting to the end of myself, ma'am. So basically, I'm thinking she's asking about how to um, get past the overwhelm. And the second question, which is similar, says, thank you, ma, for this session. Yes, thank you so much, ma. I live at Moe and I work in a restaurant at Lekki. The traffic is too much. I get home tired. My husband feels I'm neglecting him, but my job is seven days a week. I get one day off twice a month. How do I balance things? So these two questions are basically just asking about that balance and how to get beyond the overwhelm. Okay. How do you advise? I'll, I'll take I'll take the I'll take the first one. Okay. Let, let, let me say let me say something generally. Okay. The first place to start, no matter what challenge you have, is to start from a place of gratitude. That's the best place to start. So you say you are 30 years old, you have three children aged five to two. Be glad, my dear sister, that you are a 30 year old woman with three children aged five to two. There are 60 year olds looking for children, right? So let's first come to the place of gratitude. OK, yes, you feel overwhelmed because you're trying to build a business selling things. Um, I wish this was a live session, so I would ask you what is making you feel overwhelmed? Are you overwhelmed because you, you are unable to meet customer needs? Are you overwhelmed um, because I wish I understood why you, why you are overwhelmed? You say your income cannot afford you a driver or a matured or a matured um, help so you are you have to do all of these things by yourself while you're building a business how are you building your business today there are inexpensive but very uh, very smart ways of reaching our customers okay um, so you have if you have data like that everybody sells everything on instagram um these days so what sort of business are you doing? Is it business that you have to be physically present? Because if you don't have to be physically present, it means that you're going to have time for your children if you don't have to be physically present, okay? So there's going to be quite a bit of jogging, taking care of these three children, ensuring that they get to school on time, all of that if you cannot get um, a matured help. And then you set out working smart in this business of selling. You cannot afford to get to the end of yourself. There are three children staring at you who need to go to school, who need things, who need to be fine. So you can't afford to, 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 to get to the end of yourself. What you need to do is to look at this business. How can I do it better? What smart way can I still get this business, this, this uh, 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 goods and services to the customer? What is my present customer base? 
Do I need to change these customers? Do I need to expand the customer base? Do I need to get a, a, a go a notch higher? Do I need to speak to my suppliers to be able to give me some sort of leverage? There's so many things that you need to look at because everything right now is really wrapped around this business that you are doing that is therefore not giving you the time. It's for you to sit down and see how smartly, all right, you can still be in the business of buying and um, selling and then be able to create time for your children and for yourself. The lady that lives in Aja gets home, gets to work, gets to work seven days a week, gets back home, your husband is complaining, your body is complaining. My brutal response to you, you need to find another job. You need to find another job. It's not rocket science. You are going to burn out. You are going to burn out. You are going to be so unhappy with yourself. So even the work you are rushing to go and do in Lekki, you are not going to be able to do it properly. You are not going to be able to do it in a way that is going to satisfy your employers. Your husband is going to suffer. Your health is suffering. Whether you like it or not, life expectancy for you is going to be, it's, it's going to be low, whether you like it or not. So are there restaurants within a jar that you can apply to? Now, a restaurant in Lekki, this is just an assumption. A restaurant in Lekki is going to pay you maybe 50,000, just an assumption. A restaurant in Aja is probably going to pay you 40,000 or 35,000. You then ask yourself, 10,000, 15,000, my health, my marriage, um, myself, is it worth, if you, if you put a value, so these three things, it's more than 10,000, it's more than 15,000. Trust me, it's more than, just your transport alone is more than that. Because sometimes people, people are not that detailed when they're doing the work. They're just thinking, oh, I work in, uh, I, I work in Lekki, okay? Instead of working in Aja, I'd rather work in Lekki. If you do the math, you realize that your transport money alone has taken away the difference between what you would earn working in Aja and what you are earning working in Lekki. But the beauty of being able to work in Aja is that your husband, your marriage is going to improve, the relationship with your husband is going to improve, your health, your own self, you are just going to be a much better, healthier person. Thank you so much, Ma. For me, that response was so on point, fantastic, fantastic response. Uh, we have some more questions, please, Ma. Let me just take this next right. one. What is your advice to those who believe that hiring nannies to take care of your children is a bad idea? I really want your response to this one because I think I have that mindset too. Okay, do you need a politically correct answer or you need, an, or you need my answer? Your answer, Ma. <laughs> I, I believe you need, I believe you need an answer you are going to burn out you are going to burn out but again if you are a full-time housewife then by all means that's your wealth and there are people who are full-time housewives and are doing an awesome job that is the choice that they have made but please don't tell me that you want to be a career woman with three children and you do not need domestic help. Okay, so let me paint the scenario there, 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 therefore. So let's assume that your mom is with you. That would be the only answer. Let's assume that your siblings, you have younger siblings or relations that are with you. So you are not just calling them nannies, but you have help. What I said is to get support. Whether that support is a member of the family or whether that support is Paid help, please get support. Your children need a healthy you. Your children need a your children need a fulfilled you. There is no point carrying on a task that you are grumbling about. That's not life. Listen, this is ticking. Ticking. That's not life. There is no 
going on about something and then you go back, oh, these children, oh, I'm so tired, oh, the traffic, oh, this, oh, that. What's the point if you can do something about it? Because these factors, trust me, these factors are there. These factors ain't going anywhere. They are there. Deliberate living, intentional living is what I advocate. So get your support. What support means to you, it's to you. For me, I have neither mother nor father. I don't have siblings <laughs> that are going to come out. I have to have higher because I have children. I have to have higher. So I'm going to go out there, come back to the floor, clean this. I'm simply to burn out and be reducing my number of, of my my of years. That's it for me. So yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that response. Please, we have one last question. I hope okay. it's not too much. One last question. It's very detailed. So I'll just read it out. So this person says, as a single lady, how do I combine and balance my life as a daughter and sister? I currently live with my sister. I barely have time for myself because I help her at home. And it can be overwhelming, even on weekends. I don't have time for myself. How do I even find a good man with all this unnecessary domestic work? So, Ma, please, what would you be saying to this single lady? Okay, how do you how do you find a good man? I cannot answer you that one. <laughs> um, my dear, my dear single lady that is helping support her sister. What do you want? What? do you want? The first place to start is what do I want? I'm sure you heard me say that when you eventually get to that place of what I want, put it down, put those priorities, put the time, compartmentalize all of those things, and then have a healthy, heartfelt conversation, communication with the other parties in your life. They will come round. They will come round. The universe will come round for you. If you are in this same space next year, you are going to be you are going to be grumbling again. You are going to be saying the same thing over again. You need to call your sister, all right? Call your your your, your whoever it is. I have looked at my life. I am not full. My clock is ticking. And to be fulfilled, whether married or not, whether married or not, trust me, there are many fulfilled unmarried women and many, many unfulfilled married women. So this is not a matter of marriage or not marriage. OK, this is about you. OK, so. What is it that would make you fulfilled? You want to be married? Okay, go to, I don't know, your place of worship or, or where there are prospective husbands, all right, um, for you. But where it concerns your relationship with your sister and the things that you want to do with your life, as I mentioned it earlier, you put down what you want. Have that honest conversation with your sister. You'll be surprised. Your first support just may be coming from your sister. Who is probably just waiting for you to say, this is what I want to do. And she would say, oh, finally you are ready. I am right here pushing you along. Your sister, except she's wicked, wants you to be successful, wants you to be happy. So I'm sure that she would support you in whatever it is that you want to do. But you need to be first be clear about what you out of your life. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much. It's been an amazing session with you. Thank you for the questions answered. Someone just sent in on that question. I don't know if it's okay to take it or we should just move on. Do you mind us taking it? 
I'm here for you. So okay. Go so this person says, I admire you a lot, Ma. I'm an associate staff where I work, a contract staff, on our source staff, and I want to rise to management role someday through hard work. I'm still single now. Please give me some tips. So basically, how does this person rise? And I think it will speak to a lot of um, our source staff in banks and other institutions. How do we rise to management level when we're outsourced? What's, what's, apart from all you said, what are the steps okay. we can take? Okay, qu qu question, is, question is, in the organization that you presently work where you are a contract staff, what is it that qualifies you to get into management, the management position? You need to find that out. Do you have that qualification, both in academic qualification and your work, all right, that would move you? If you have the educational qualification that would move you into that management um, um that should move you into that management position. Has your work today shown that you can take on the responsibility of that next level? Are you, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are, let's say an entry level staff, are you working as an entry level staff or you are already working as the next level and the next level and the next level, right? Nobody is indispensable in an organization. So my question to you becomes, does your output, does your output tell your uh, superiors, we don't want to lose this one. So yeah, you are not indispensable, so to speak. So on your own, you may decide to be, but is your output such that ah, this organization does not want to, um, to lose you. Now, Going back to what qualifies you to go into a management position, if you are working in an institution where no matter what you do, no matter how great your work is, how hard you work, how smart you work, how intelligent you are, based on the institution's policy, you cannot move into that next level. Then it's time to move to, it's time to do your homework and move to another organization. It's time to move to another, uh, another, another organization. If where you are is not going to take you, no matter how great you are, how smart you are, but you will be able to attain that position that you want to, that is going to give you a fulfilled, intentionally um, harmonized life, it's time to move to another organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Thank you for pouring out from your heart. It was an amazing, amazing session, and I'm sure all the participants think so too. Thank you everyone for joining. So we'll be wrapping up this session here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating. Thank you for sending in questions. We appreciate you. And I hope that you learned that from this session, you matter. And the, your priority should be to take care of yourself first before you um, spread out yourself too thin in your other roles in life as a woman. Thank you once again, Ma. So these sessions will be on our YouTube channel. You can go to Heritage Bank PLC on YouTube to watch replays of this session that we've had. And if you still have questions, you can put them in the comment section and then we'll get to them and provide feedback. We will see you same time tomorrow for another amazing session with another great woman. Thank you very much. And once again, Happy International Women's Day. See you tomorrow. You. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.